At WWDC yesterday, Apple announced a bunch of new features to their mainline operating systems, and as expected and as usual, they released developer betas. I've got them all installed on my various devices here, and I wanted to take you through a deep dive of all these new features and kind of show you the ones that I found that are highlights. Some of them they talked about on stage, and some of them were surprises. So without further ado, let's get to it. I want to start with the big one, iOS. And it's honestly not that big of an update, but compared to the rest of the announcements, it's packed full. The lock screen is the most dramatic overhaul we're getting this year. As you can see, we have a new stylized clock and this depth effect with these color swoops, swoops, swoops. If we go in and customize, you'll see the option to add widgets, adjust the clock typeface and color. If there are options to edit the wallpaper style, you can swipe through those here. The selection of widgets feel very similar to watch complications with small little bits of information available at a quick glance. An odd change though is when you're charging, it doesn't show the battery percentage charged anymore. I assume this is intended to get you to add a battery widget to the lock screen, or maybe they're just prepping to bring back status bar battery percentage with that new hole punch display rumor going around. But anyway, going back to the select screen, if you jump to the end of the list, you can create a new one. You're presented with templates and featured wallpapers, or you can select photos of your own as a starting point. If you do select your own photo and pick one that has a well-defined subject, you can resize and see where the subject is going to overlay on top of the time. I also really like the fade-in animation that seems to start from that subject. Notifications also collect here at the bottom and roll over in time. If you exceed the available space, a little note pops up with the additional apps that have notifications for you. Before we leave the lock screen, I have to bring attention to the fact that Face ID now works in landscape. Apple did say it's on select iPhones only, so if you have a model that has a notch, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but it is wonderful and a long time coming. A small tweak I noticed here was on white areas of wallpaper. Uh, iOS 16 adds this drop shadow effect under text. I'm unsure if I like it or not, but it's definitely something that jumped out at me right away. They've added this spotlight search button here where your page dots normally are. You can still pull down to access search though. So this either feels like a transition away from the pull down action to replace it with something else down the road or just trying to get search in front of more people. Moving into messages, they've added the ability to edit and unsend a message. After sending, you long press the message and now you're presented with the option to edit or unsend. It does warn you that it may not delete or edit for people who are on older versions of iOS. Speaking of messages and typing, Apple has turned on the ability to have keyboard haptics. As someone who's been using an iPhone and an Android phone simultaneously for the last six or seven years, it feels both great and honestly kind of wrong. It's a really nerdy feature that very few people will appreciate, but I'm happy it's here. Apple has overhauled the dictation, allowing you to have your keyboard open while you're doing voice text. It works really well and it reminds me a lot of what Google did with the Pixel last year. I still think Google edges it out, but I'm glad Apple is playing in this space too. During the keynote at the end of the iOS section, they kind of just threw in this personalized spatial audio feature. Basically, you scan your ears kind of like you do with your face for Face ID, and it's supposed to create a more personalized version of spatial audio. I can't really hear any difference. Uh, maybe I'm just old and my ears aren't what they used to be, but I just can't. I can't hear it. They also expanded live text to work in video this year. So if you take a video you have on your phone and scrub to a spot with text in it, it can automatically detect any text. You can copy it, select it right from the video page. But Apple didn't just let you select text. They expanded this year to images and created what may be the silliest feature they announced this year, which I'm referring to as sticker mode. In any photo that has a defined subject, you can long press the subject and it'll auto cut it out. So take this picture of my cat Moo, I can grab her and move her right into messages. I don't see a ton of frequent utility, but I know when I do want it, I'm gonna be very glad I have it. On the iPad side of iOS, I can't show you many of the features because they didn't bring Stage Manager to the A-series iPad Pros, but I can show you the weather app. And it's a weather app. In all honesty, it looks pretty good and it does have a lot of data available but you know it was a light year for iPad when the weather app got its own section in the keynote. The watch didn't see many updates either. Uh, I don't run, so I can't really show you any of the new running data. I mean, I guess I could, but I'm not gonna, even for content. And I just can't really sleep with my watch either. Uh, I just can't find comfort in it, so the new sleep data is gonna be hard for me to do. 
Maybe I'll try to do it tonight and I'll upload it as a short tomorrow. Other than that, the only real changes to watch are a few new watch faces like this one here with, uh, with these little guys. And that notifications now come in as banners, which I actually really like. I was never a big fan of the full screen notifications before. So I think these are cleaner and I'm here for it. Lastly, there's macOS Ventura. Here we can see the new stage manager mode. It works pretty well, but I don't ever really need to group my windows like this. I do like this visual more than them collapsing into the dock though. They also did a visual refresh of the settings app. It's more like an iPad app with panes and categories and it's much nicer. Finally, there's continuity camera, which is definitely my favorite new feature in macOS this year. If I open up Zoom and put my iPhone on a dock here, I can kind of mimic that new Belkin adapter that they're gonna be selling later this year that attaches to your monitor or the top of your laptop. Selecting my iPhone's camera from the settings will auto switch over to it and we're presented with a much better image. It's amazing and fixes honestly one of the major problems with my old 2017 MacBook Pro. And that wraps up all the big things that I noticed in the new rounds of operating systems this year. I think the standouts for me are the new lock screen, keyboard haptics, landscape face ID, sticker mode, and continuity camera. But what were your favorite new features? Have you found something that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. I mean, these betas have only been out for about a day now, so I'm sure there's tons more stuff that's gonna come out over the next days and weeks. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this, and honestly, some videos not like this. I'm gonna do some different stuff as time goes on. Anyway, I've been Jake, and I can't wait to talk to you in the next one. Thank you.